there's an ever-growing number of ways to manage state in your React application. Obviously, you have the built-in use state hook, which if you're using functional components is pretty much it when it comes to component level state management. If you want state management for your entire app, well, you've got a few decisions to make. You can look at heavyweights like Redux, the senior citizen of React state libraries, or libraries such as MobX, MobX state tree, React query, xState, Recoil, and Zustand. Or you can just use Context, which is built into React. In today's video, I'm gonna give you an overview of Context and its accompanying hook, Use Context. But before I do, for anyone new to React, a reminder of what state actually is. State is basically a plain JavaScript object that stores data relevant to the current state of a component. An example of this might be a login form. You have a username field, a password field, and a submit button. The values that you type into the username and password field might be stored in local state, ready to be sent to the server when submit is pressed. Now, password fields should mask the password, but sometimes they have a little icon that allows you to show or hide the password you've just typed in. This would be controlled by state. You might have a show password boolean stored in state the default value of false. And when you click on that icon, it'll toggle the value from false to true. And you can then use that Boolean to show the password in the password field. Application state or global state is state that is used by multiple components throughout the app, such as the current logged in user or the theme being used. Okay, back to context and let's take a look at some code. Okay, so I have a very simple React app here. And as you can see, I have one input field with a business name. When I change that business name, it'll reflect in the title here and it'll reflect in the footer. So if we look at the code, we've got business name set in state. And when I change the value in the input, it takes it from the event target value and it sets the business name in state. Then I'm taking the business name and I'm passing it into the title component and I'm passing it into the footer component. So these footer and title components are very simple. You can see that they take one prop and it just renders the business name. And the same with the title, it takes the one prop and renders the business name. So we'll just see here quickly, if I delete, you can see here that it's updated at the title and it's updated in the footer. So that's one way to obviously manage your state. Now we're gonna convert this over to using context instead. This particular example is very simple example, but when you have an app with components that are further apart or are nested pretty deep, then you're gonna find that passing props down doesn't always work or it can just get pretty messy. Okay, to set up context, we wanna create a context file. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna create a file. I'm gonna call it business name context.js. And inside, I'm gonna import react from react. And I wanna create business name name context, react.create context. And then I'm gonna pass it an object. And down here, I'm gonna export default. This is name context. Inside this object, I'm gonna specify what values I'm gonna be storing inside of context. So the first value is business name, and that's gonna be a string. The second value is gonna be the setter. So this is how I set the business name inside of context. I'm going to say set business name, and that's going to be a function. I'm just defining an empty function here because inside of this create context object, I'm basically kind of just setting the types. I'm not actually setting default values, and I'll show you where I do that next. So I'll save that, and then we want to go into app, and I'm going to import business name context, and then I'm going to wrap the home page component here with the provider that comes from the business name context. So we're gonna do business name context dot provider. And down here, we're gonna close business name context dot provider. And it's from here that I'm gonna now pass in the default values. So I, again, we saw I want a business name and I wanted a setter. So I need to now create that business name and the setter. So we're going to start by importing use state from React. I'm going to go business name, set business name, use state. And then provider takes a value. 
which I'm going to pass in as an object containing the business name and the setter. What we're doing here is we're actually passing in the default value of business name and we're passing in the function that we're going to use to set that default value. And as you can see, business name is just an item in state inside of app and set business name is the setter that comes with it. So I'm going to save that. And then if I go into the home page, I can again import business name context. And to actually read the context, I need to import the use context hook. And then here is where I was originally setting the state. What I'm going to do is change this to use context. I'm going to delete this and instead of the default value as the argument, we're passing in the context that we created inside of business name context. So business name context. And you might remember if we look at it again, we created an object with business name and set business name. So I'm going to change this destructuring from destructuring an array to destructuring an object. And if I save that, you can see now that we get the default value of Dunder Mifflin, which we're using in this input and we're using it in this footer. So if I change this to Wernham Hog, it updates it here and it updates it there. So I don't need this use state anymore. So what that's doing is it's using the set business name setter from here, which is then stored inside of this context. And the value it's using is business name, which comes from here and is stored inside of this context. So I can log this out and we'll have a quick look here that if I'm to change anything, it gets logged out in the app file. So you can see it's just simply state that's in the app. We're then using context to access that state and to access the setter in that state. And we can go further with this context. Instead of passing business name down as a prop, which isn't a big deal because we're only passing it one level down here to title and one level down into footer. But if you've got a component that's nested six levels deep and you want to pass a value from this component six levels deep, instead of passing it through every single component in that tree, you can set it in context and then access it from context. So to show you how that's done, we're just going to do exactly the same thing here. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go into title and I'm going to import the context. I'm going to import use context and I'm going to copy this line and delete the prop because we don't need to take that prop anymore. Paste that in and we don't need the setter. So we just need to destructure business name from that context. If I save that, I've got an error and that's just showing that I've got the import path wrong. So I'm actually one level up. So if I just change that to two dots, save it again. And now you can see that the business name has been passed down into the title component. So it still works as expected. So I can now delete business name from here. And I'm going to do the same for footer. So I'll delete business name. And you can see once I do that, the business name disappears from the footer, but I can then import business name context. import use context, delete this prop because it's not being passed in anymore. And I can say context business name equals use context and pass in business name context. And it comes back into the footer. So that's how context works. But as you can see, if you're using a context a few times throughout the app, it gets a bit tedious importing use context and then importing business name context and then doing this dance down here. So you could create your own custom hook. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. So I'm going to go into the source folder again, and I'm going to do use business name context. It's a long hook name, but it's descriptive. So here I'm going to import use context from React. I'm going to import business name context. I'm going to create the react function, which is the hook. So use business name context. I'm going to export that 
as the default. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to destructure business name and set business name from use context and pass in business name context. So this is the code that I've written three times in all three components. I've imported this three times in all three components and I've imported use context all three times in all three components. So what I'm doing here is I'm destructuring it from use context and then I'm going to return the same object. So business name, set business name. I'll save that. So now inside of footer, I can delete this and I'm going to change this to import uh, use business name context. And you can see that still works in the footer. The business name is still fully functional. So I've created a custom hook to manage this context. In this case, it's just removed one extra import of use context. And you might find it just a bit simpler to do. Obviously, this is a simple example of a custom hook, but it just shows you how you can simplify things a little bit. And so we'll quickly do the same thing in here. So I'm going to change that to use business name context, copy that, delete that, delete that. And we're going to go into the title as well. Just quickly change these, use business name context, delete that. And the app is still functional. So just to recap, I've created my context file, which contains an object of a business name and a set business name. Now, as you saw that we're passing in the value of this object into the provider, which means that these values don't actually do anything. I could actually delete this altogether and everything would still work as expected, but I find Personally, it's good practice to do this here because you're kind of setting up the types that you're using. So it's a way to kind of look at the context and go, okay, what do I expect that I'm going to be using in here? I know I'm going to take a business name, which is a string, and I know I'm going to take a set business name setter function. Um, so like I said, because we're passing in the default values here and we're setting the default value of business name to Dunder Mifflin in the state, um, these values don't actually do anything, but it's it's kind of documentation that's built in, in a way, if you do it that way. Um, so as I said, we set this up here. We then create a state value of business name and the set business name function. And then we import business name context into the app. And we wrap the homepage component in a provider that we get from business name context. And then we need to pass in a value, which I've passed in as an object containing business name and set business name. And then now we have this use business name context hook, which imports use context from React. And we also import the business name context. We pass that into use context and it gives us the object that we have set inside of business name context. And we're then destructuring that to get business name and set business name. And inside of this hook, we're actually just returning the values that we got from context, which allows us to do something like this without having to import use context and without having to import the actual context file and passing it into use context hook. Now, a couple of other things to consider when using context. Don't try and squeeze too much state into one context. Instead, create multiple contexts and render the providers only where you need to. And that leads me to my second tip. Only put a context provider as high up the tree as necessary. In other words, don't put your context provider in the app file if it's only being used in components four levels deep. Okay, hopefully you learned something today. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Happy coding and I'll see you next time.